Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. Uh, today we are going over stock dividends. So um, stock dividends tend to give students a lot of trouble, but once you go through them a few times and you uh, learn all the little quirks and the ins and outs involved in stock dividends, um, it actually can be a pretty tolerable experience. Uh, so let's take a look at the problem we have here. Um, on November 15th, 2019, uh, XYZ Corporation announced a 2% stock dividend to be distributed on December 15th. The company had 200,000 shares of $5 par common stock outstanding, and the market price per share was $12. So when we talk about dividends, we have three important dates, and we went over this briefly in the cash dividends video. The first important date is the date of declaration which basically is just the day that it's announced, finally, when the company says we are going to be giving a dividend. The second important date is the date of record. This is typically the halfway point between the date of declaration and the final important date. And this just says who exactly is going to be getting the dividend. Whoever owns the stock as of that date is entitled to the dividend. And the last important date, uh, since we're dealing with stock dividends, we are going to call this the date of distribution. Um, when we're doing cash dividends, we call this the date of payment. But since we're not paying stock, we are going to be distributing stock. We'll call this one the date of distribution. So for the first date, the date of declaration, it's important that we first uh, kind of analyze what is going on here. Uh, what do they mean when they say that we are going to be giving a 2% stock dividend? Well, let's start analyzing that first. Um, essentially, this tells us how many shares we are actually going to be giving out. So 2% stock dividend means 2% of the outstanding shares. So if we originally had 200,000 sh oh, shares outstanding, and we are giving out a 2% dividend, well, the number of shares that we will be giving out will then be 200,000 times 2%. We are actually giving out 4,000 shares. Now, notice that this 4,000 is in shares, not in dollars. And as you may remember from earlier in your accounting academic careers, whenever we do journal entries, we, it has to be in monetary units. So we can't just simply say 4,000 shares and have that be it. We need to make sure that we're doing it in dollars rather than in shares. So this was actually a first step that we are going to need and we'll use this information to construct our journal entries. So let's start with the date of declaration. On the date of declaration, we are obviously declaring a stock dividend. So let's start with that. Uh, stock dividends are contra capital accounts. So in order to recognize an increase in our stock dividends, we will have to debit stock dividends. Remember, in order to increase a contra capital, you must debit. Now let's hold off on the amount for now. Let's take a look at the next one. Now remember, um, when we did cash dividends for the date of declaration, it was uh, cash dividends debit and cash dividends payable credit. So in this case, it's kind of similar, but this isn't payable. This is actually going to be distributable. So we are not going to be using a payable account. We are going to be using a capital account called stock dividends distributable. All right. So let's start with just these two pieces, and then I'll help you fill in some of the blanks. So stock dividends, we are always going to value those at market value. So if we are giving out 4,000 shares and the market price per share is $12 per share as of that date of declaration, then that is what we are going to value those 4,000 shares at. So 4,000 shares times $12 per share, 48,000 is going to the amount be, be the amount for our stock dividend. Now for stock dividends distributable, we are always going to value those at par. So here for our credit to stock dividends distributable, that capital account, we are going to be taking the 4,000 shares that we are going to be distributing in the future and multiply that by the $5 par. So our credit to stock dividends distributable is 20,000. Now, 
by now you'll notice that this can't be all there is because as you can see, these do not equal. And you know one of the most important rules of journal entries is your debits must always equal your credits. So in this case, how much are we missing? Well, we're missing a total of $28,000. So we have to figure out what that credit account is going to be. So in this case, just like whenever we issue stock, the difference is going to be put into our, our PIC account, paid in capital. Now, some textbooks uh, word this a little differently. The one that I see most often is this account is called paid in capital in excess of par. So please be sure to take a closer look at your textbook and see which one that your textbook uses. And also keep in mind that some textbooks use retained earnings rather than stock dividends. So that's another thing to be on the lookout for. But essentially, that's our journal entry for the date of declaration. Don't forget your stock dividends debit valued at market price. Don't forget your stock dividends distributable credit valued at par, and then you simply use paid in capital for the difference, just like when you were journalizing those issuance of common stock back in the day. All right, our next one is the date of record. And for the date of record, just like for cash dividends, is no entry. So remember, whenever we say date of record, this is simply telling us who is going to be getting the dividends. There is no monetary change, so there's no journal entry required. So really, the accountant, in this case, when we're doing journal entries, we don't really care too much about this. Now, for the date of distribution, this is us finally giving out those stock dividends that we had talked about back on November 15th. So now that it's December 15th, we are going to be giving out those 4,000 shares. Now let's look back at our prior entry to see if we can figure out an account that's probably being used. Well, here we credited stock dividends distributable. So now that we are distributing them, we are going to have to decrease that account. Stock dividends distributable. So we're going to do the opposite to decrease that account. Now let's talk about our credit here. So previously, these uh, dividends were, were stock dividends, were distributable. Now that we're distributing them, what exactly are we distributing? Well, we are distributing common stock. So in this case, our credit is common stock. And I want you to notice here, we always value stock dividends distributable at par. Well, if you may remember from back when you were learning on how to issue common stock, what did you always value common stock at? Again, at par. So that's why this flow of information works so well. Previously, we recorded the market price as the cash dividend and stock dividends distributable at that par, and that par ends up turning into our common stock. So really, that's all there really is to stock dividends. As long as you remember those important rules, remember to calculate the number of shares in the beginning and then run through all of those steps with the journal entries, you are good to go. So other than that, keep practicing and happy studying. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe.